the worst. Greetings, I'm Shad also known as a man of culture and of science. Why am I a man of culture and science? Because, well, we like to appreciate those things that uplift culture and also to analyze things for science, of course, particularly how the medieval period is adapted into fantasy. And one of the more prominent ways in which medieval elements are adapted into fantasy is weapons, but also armor. Armor is an important thing. In fact, there's a bit of an arms race in the medieval period between armor technology and weapon technology, so we can't forget the importance of armor in how it is adapted to fantasy. And I've covered this a lot, uh, particularly one of the more prominent ways in which armor is adapted, and that is when it's adapted to accentuate or appreciate, appreciate certain fashion things, fashion elements that we have in the modern day. And so in this time round, we're going to be taking a look at new you know, elements of fantasy armor, but with my two co-hosts joining me, both Tyrant and Nate, to hear what their views are on this important topic as we look at even more boob armor. Is it boob time? It, it is, is. I think it, it is. is. It is boob time. Because this is a subject that I have, you know, studied just a little bit in the past, uh, for science, of course, and, and for You guys videos. are watching this for science? Yeah. Oh. It's a very scientific endeavor. Oh, okay. All right, for science. Yeah, of course, of course. First of all, armor was never always made with practicality as the primary thing in mind. It was part of it, but um, fashion is actually an important part of armor design that we see, you know. Yeah, we've seen that since um, since the Bronze Age, if yeah. not before. Yeah. Look at the muscle cuirass, yeah. which is male boob armor equivalent, or basically. Basically. What a gorgeous design. And this is there actually is. A, a perfect example of... You like actually trying to make it as f functional as possible armor. So this is armor that is actually made with more functionality in mind over fashion, even though it's very fashionable. Mm -hmm. Keep in mind when you wear armor, you wear layers underneath. Yes. Which yeah. uh, it, it hides definitions yeah. of your body. But yes. this conforms to a feminine shape mm -hmm. uh, over a male shape. Okay, showing that there is, uh, you know, a bust on the armor because armor does have kind of a like a, you know, an area that swells more, and it's usually lower. It is usually yeah, it is usually lower, and that's not always necessarily like I've got a bit of weight on me at the moment, mm. but it's not always necessarily for the stomach. Sometimes that area is specifically meant to be left for air, mm -hmm. because if it's not left for air, then the impact is hitting you straight on the body, even through a gambeson or mm -hmm. a, or an arming jacket or whatever. Um, so having it raised for boobs is good, but at the same time, you've now got skin or something directly up against it. So when it gets hit, mm -hmm. that vibration and that impact is still, thing still is though, hitting. There are multiple, and I mean multiple types of armors that basically hug close to the skin. Oh yeah. Like, like look at heaps of brigandines with wasp thin waists that were like tight, really. Hit. Yeah. And even that was, and, a, that was a fashion thing. And then there's breastplates as well that were really tight yep. on the waist. Yeah. And then of Those course- Those two piece had, ones where they basically mm, slotted into each yeah. other. And then chain mail. Chain mail is going to transfer a lot of blunt force. So I, I find it really interesting. Nearly every criticism that I have heard against boob armor as to why you shouldn't do it either because it's impractical or dangerous or anything like that has equivalent supposed weaknesses that people are saying in just general armor design in other pieces. Like, like it's resting too much on the sternum or something like that, that or it'll funnel the uh, force into a specific area. I'm like, have you have you seen armor? Like, so I, heaps of armor designs have areas that will funnel strikes into a focal point okay, resting so, on someone's... So I, I kind of agree with you, mm -hmm. but at the same time, it very much depends, or at least my opinion, I should mm -hmm. say, very much depends on where it is on the body. So let's take the waist being sucked right in, which mm -hmm. does happen on a lot of medieval medieval uh, pieces. If that's sucked right in and you stab at, at someone and it happens to fall into that canyon, then it goes left or right. It mm -hmm. doesn't stop. It doesn't go anywhere. When... I mean, when not it's always, but I know it's not generally, always, generally not always. Yes. Um, generally, it's going to armor deflection, armor angling is yeah. the thing. It's going to deflect left and right. If there is the the canyon basically here, mm. what that's going to do is deflect in to a stopping point or deflect in and up, up or down. Yeah, yeah, no, not yeah, depending mm. on the way the attack yeah. is, um, which creates so I can understand that danger because that funneling point, because it's right there. Mm. It's it's a much more dangerous point than having a funneling point on your waist. The thing is, though, there's, again, I, th that criticism can be applied to conventional types of armor designs. There's um, breastplates that date from Agincourt that um, had a tendency to funnel strikes upwards to the point where they needed a metal kind of thing put on the armor to, to deflect, deflect the upwards right. things. So 
I mean, the other thing about the funneling the strike to the thing, uh, they always assume that the uh, the cavity that comes in, if you have more shaped boob armor, right, is resting on the sternum. And it's like, no, no, you can have a cavity that shapes in that is still resting above the chest. As long as it is doing that, like yeah. it's not too form fitting because mm -hmm. having a, a steel, even if you've got padding, having steel right up against a bony point of your body and then getting hit there, canes. Mm -hmm. Absolutely that, canes. It does. And, and if you um, cop a lethal... Now, it's mm -hmm. no longer going to be lethal through heavy steel armor, but a lethal strike, that will break that bone. Mm -hmm. So I can understand, like, you you mm -hmm. don't want that happening to your breastbone. Well, everyone assumes that the cavity must be resting on the stern. Well, no, it doesn't have to. You can still have the cavity and it's okay. resting above. Okay. And, uh, what, and again, there are many types of historical armor that is much more form-fitting mm -hmm. and you don't get that protection. Something that I, I um, see that you didn't necessarily bring up is that ridge is always talked about in regards of armor angry or mm -hmm. armor deflection. Um, nobody ever talks about the fact that it breaks blades. It mm -hmm. snaps swords. And one mm -hmm. example is a shield boss, which is like the, the heavily armored piece on like a Viking shield mm -hmm. in the center. There we go. Yep. Um, has broken probably more so in, in my hand when I've been swinging them has broken more swords than other people's swords or other people's pieces mm -hmm. of armor because they've put the shield in the way. All of a sudden you have this very convex, concave, convex um, shape that a sword cannot bend around. Sword is going too fast, too hard, and it just gives. Mm -hmm. It breaks at that point. Usually it's not a brand new sword. It's a sword that has been worn and torn. Mm -hmm. But if you have that here as like a chest piece or you have basically now um, two shield bosses mm -hmm. sitting on your chest. Yeah. That's there a good is, way of putting that. There is, <laughs> there is that. you basically have two breaking points for swords. So there's, I consider it that there's pros and cons. Mm. Two breaking points for that. <laughs> <laughs> Many a man has broken their swords. <laughs> so in regards to this armor design, mm -hmm. it's probably one of the best examples of functional feminine designed armor I think I've ever seen. It's actually really nice. All right, so some other um, examples from history, like look at this interesting artwork right here. It's hard to kind of define exactly what the armor would look like functionally, but uh, you know, you can see a distinct feminine shape to, to them. Mm. Mm -hmm. um, going again, another interesting one. This one actually looks like it's oh, got segmented that, pieces. That almost looks like sci-fi armor. Yeah, scale, it's uh, pretty cool. Scale. That one looks, yeah. Um, this one actually has sections emphasizing uh, certain features. Now, not necessarily. They could be rondels. They could be rondels, you're right. But um, you, which can, rondels, you can still the way, see the shaping here. For those though. who don't know, rondels would sit under mm. the pauldron and protect the armpit. So when you yeah. raise, you've got a disc of steel there. That, then, but that, then this rondel would be sitting in front of the arm if that was the case. Yeah. So, but I, I mean, usually, I usually flip my rondels because they always go, <laughs> they, they fling around all over the place. Uh, that doesn't look like rundles anymore. Yeah, yeah. So interesting examples. This one is hard to kind of find because what are these are these sourced materials or are these modern interpretations no, no, of these, medieval this, art? This is actual taken straight from I've you know, never seen this. Yeah, yeah. Like there's some really interesting uh pieces of uh look at these ones. Like you to see a distinct shape there. You do, um, and uh, you know we see like so, a, a fold yep. of different lanes. So, so armor being worn with dresses apparently was common. I've seen that in a few mm. few pieces before, but I've never seen them with like form fitting busts or mm. accentuated features. But like this well, with a with a medieval dress, yeah, I, I, like I, right there. that's that's a. Uh, that's a really nice look. Like yeah, the whole concept of terrible. like you know the fashion of a dress <laughs> and the armor on top. Um, and so, yeah, th this is where that comes from. It's mm. from a medieval manuscript. Uh, there you go. This is another interesting one. Almost like with the same design as those previous ones in terms of you can see the bust emphasized and then it has a distinct fold there. You know, fantasy, very popular. We love fantasy. And as experts and uh, men of culture, we're going to take a look at some of these designs and give our feedback and thoughts. All right. All right. So here is the first example. This one is a little hard to understand exactly of where is plate and where is gray cloth. Yeah. Because yeah. clearly there's some gray cloth happening here. Armor, yes. And, uh, and, and so as a result, I don't think it's the best design. I think it's a horrible design because her arteries on the inside of her thighs are exposed. Mm, yep. yep. Like, well, that's well, just well, one thing. Like, I know we're talking about um, boob armor and everything else, yeah. but just as one comment. You do know, in terms of the... Um, 
I guess, limbs that were opted to be unarmored when in terms of like, choose, like what, which limbs would you choose to be unarmored in from actual historical sources? And she has a shield, yeah, which yeah. can cover that. But legs were often not armored at all. They would be like wearing this full on breastplate and everything. The legs, they're just wearing tights. So I, I do not criticize but, fantasy art that has but legs you said, unarmored. But you said taking away from history and just analyzing this from a modern medical no, 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 knowledge no, we, point we of view. We want to actually okay, look at okay. it from historical sources as well from and a, see how valid it could possibly okay. be. I like it. Here's, a, here's, a, here's an interesting piece. I'm... Hmm. Hmm. I'm I I, hmm. I I so these guys are going to do what they're doing. I'm actually going to give you some some opinions. Some <laughs> no 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 scientific opinions. What you say? What minus, what I mean? minus scientific. <laughs> two next. This is very objective scientific study. Gentlemen, gentlemen, this here is clearly a very skilled woman. So skilled that she doesn't need uh. uh you know, too much protection. Because we did have people that went into battle naked and wore nothing but woad and still died. And I salute them. <laughs> <laughs> I think... So, well, this is the interesting historical point. There is examples of people going into battle not wearing too much. The point of reference is the Celts. And uh, they uh, sometimes certain Celts would go into battle, Starkers, and... Uh, no, they wore blue. They wore blue. Oh, well, they... they, so they woad, woad, by the way, was a paint made with horse urine. And uh, big shield, and that's the key. If you have a shield, <laughs> a shield can You're substitute fine. a lot. It, uh, it's not going to be perfect, but a shield can substitute a lot for the lack of armor you might be wearing. It can, especially when used properly, you don't get hit anywhere but the shield. So, so this, this is practical. Well, we all agree. Yes, well, well fantastic. does it achieve the same purpose as a historical point of reference? So the, the speculation as to why they would do this... <laughs> I think actually is intimidation. <laughs> Imagine you see the starkest guy right just oh, I would be free of it. Okay, whoa, so whoa. we're on we're on topics. We're on topics. What are you gonna try and penetrate me with here? Seeing as Gosh. <laughs> seeing as we're on topics of like, let's just call it shock value. I uh, one of my old training officers told me a story once of someone who he was training who she would wear a gamison folded at the front and nothing underneath. Now, she would, in the middle of fighting, when fighting other groups, just open it up. It would create enough shock <laughs> in the opponent that she would get the hit. She would basically, like, the, the person would just stop you know, and look down. Especially but if, you're, special attack, especially yeah? if Heavy you're attack. assuming you're fighting a guy, right? No, no, no. Like, you knew... But, you, but you, imagine if you're like, with a helmet and thick gambeson, sometimes you wouldn't be able to tell. Perhaps perhaps not, but no, you'd be able to tell, like... <laughs> and then they're can, like, good morning. But it's, yeah, like somebody is coming up to you, fighting with, the, she fought with two weapons. I think you're okay. right. She was fighting with two weapons. <laughs> anyway, um, it can be, four, it can be, it can be, a, it can be a very, it can be a very effective tactic. So I see what you're saying and it has, it's apparently worked. Well, well there we go. We have a real world example of it. Like, okay. The other thing, other point of reference is. Some Gaulic tribes, uh, look, I haven't double checked this source and I, 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 this was mentioned on a documentary I watched years ago. And so take this with a grain of salt, okay? But um, when the Gauls were going into fight, some of their women would stand on the sidelines and cheer them on. And one of the ways that they would cheer them on is by flashing certain things. That sounds, I can't. You've heard that before? I well? think I've yeah. heard that before. I don't know whether that's just like hearsay or whether yeah, it's a I, fable, but I've, I've I think heard I've heard it. that before as well. And I mean, I imagine, you know, you're a guy going to battle and you yeah. see a woman and she's like, here's some encouragement. It's like, I need a, I need to survive this battle. <laughs> I mean, that right. would be one of the things. If going I saw her running at me, I'd be like, well, you know, we're not so different, you and I. Maybe, maybe, <laughs> maybe I should. And I mean, hey, so, so from like, a, so from you a, had the killing blow, and you're like, hey, what are you, hey, what I, are you doing after this? In, in regards okay. to actual functional armor, I don't see much here. No. I mean, they, they, I, I could almost give it a, a, a point for, uh, like an. You know, having a limb armored, but there's too many gaps in this armor from, and especially like, see this bracer here. It's just too thin at the front. It's not giving proper armor. It's protection. barely doing anything. Yeah, and I wasn't joking. If she ran at me, I'd be like, "All right, guys, I'm on her team. Now. Like we are, <laughs> we are against it. I'm on her team." You know, you know how I said I'm taking you laughing one day. Now I'm not taking you laughing anymore because you will, you will defect. All right, Drow Elf here, and uh, I actually don't see much armor here at all. No, uh, that's, no, that's no. not armor. This is not boob armor. Movie. Hmm. Hmm. Two swords. That's useful. She, yeah, she certainly has those two weapons. Mm. That's correct. All four. Yeah. Depends on how you want to calculate these things. 
So it's armor, but the whole like theme of the video, it's not a, it actually doesn't have any boob armor. So I think it looks like the D&D version of half plate or field plate without the field or yeah. other half. And what annoys me about this, there are, in terms of conventional armor placement on, you know, your human body, there are areas which we see historically were opted to be unarmored. And, mm -hmm. and there's almost like a list of priorities. Like the first area which you would opt to be unarmored, usually the legs. Um, and because we see people decked out with like fully like breastplates, helmets, arms, everything, nothing on the legs at all. And so the legs are the, one of the first options to choose to be unarmored. Yeah, but that's also because the, like legs are usually, not always, usually out of the way. Mm -hmm. yeah. um, though as soon as you start bringing in spears and warfare, and so it depends mm -hmm. on the combat. Is this dueling or is this warfare? Like the, it does change up what you should wear for armor. My criticism with this one is that the it's areas the that to choose to be unarmored are both wrong and she's using the wrong weapons to even try and justify. Like if she was using a shield, you can get away with not having a breastplate. But it seems Two big heavy swords? To, like... Yeah, I mean, she has take she her her main weapons. She's showing. Mm. I mean, I think this is perfectly armored. So high heels, you know. High shout heels. out, shout out to Jill Bearup who has oh, done yeah. many uh, a video on high heels and fantasy armor design. Um, basically, her takeaway is if you have a high heel that it flares out and has a bit more stability and probably not super high either, you can get away with them in some physical activity. But high heels like this is just an ankle breaking. Yeah, and know, especially device. especially on different terrains mm -hmm. like. Battlefields are not flat roads. Yeah. So you can have high heels, they just need to be designed in a more practical way. I think I've shown this in a previous boob armor video, but this is another example of perfect boob armor. This is almost flawlessly designed. Like, and that's a steel breastplate? Yeah, this is like a steel breastplate. Yeah. and uh, just gothic plate. I'm not a fan of the fold being separated here. I mean... It you would probably still Asian would be, feel. perhaps, but there would still be like chain and padding and yeah, things underneath that. Is there, is there padding here? Yeah. You would imagine there would be. Don't see too much. Oh, uh, that looks kind of be. quilted. Yeah, maybe there's a bit of quilting there. We're just zooming in for you know their science here. We have to I, I, like in terms of full plate armor. Uh, there's a bit of thigh vulnerability here. It's not covered. Yeah, but it looks padded, and you need that. You need that area open anyway. It's usually covered. Usually, the battle skirt will be. A bit you can longer. push it high. You can get these thigh guards all the way up to here usually, and you still got them moving. Mm. Uh, but still, great, great armor overall. Okay, so all right, this is this one. Tyrant is more interested in. I think this is very practical. Really? Yeah, yeah, really? yeah. Really. Yeah. My big is this bloody pauldron. Look how friggin' big that is. You okay. barely be able to move with that thing on. So right. let's follow let's follow the logic chain here. Let's okay? <laughs> so this is a uh, temple with you know smoke in the background. Yep. So obviously magic exists in this world. Sure. Well, let's take there the is previous there is. Let's take the previous warrior that Shad just showed. Yeah. Okay. Let's say we've got an army of them. Mm. And let's say we've got an army of these ladies. Mm. Okay. They have some type of magical protection yeah, or whatever yeah, yeah. else. What's stopping them having that and the armor on top, which means well, these armor. lose. Yeah. Well, these guys lose. They're from two different worlds. So, so what Tyrant is saying is that he doesn't care how sciencey it is, how mm. fanciful it is. He's just going to head cannon to make it work. Okay, in terms of a warrior that chooses to wear less, you know, clothing, and we have yeah, a that's, historical example. That's of legit thing. This type of clothing would maintain movement, not get into the way mm. in the way too much. Yeah, you're right. So, Take away the pauldron, maybe the shoes. Yeah, yeah. The but like, shoes. it's you can. She's basically fighting in her underwear with mm -hmm. like gauntlets on, for yeah. all intents and purposes. And, you can fight in your underwear with gauntlets. I mean, I, I, and like historical reference, she is technically wearing more than some certain Celts that went into battle. So yeah. um, you know, she's actually more clothed. But let's take that pauldron away. Yeah, that pauldron is all. And awful. give her a shield or something, maybe. This is just. I like it. It's it, red. It, I dig it. it. It's actually, but it's not boob armor though. This is a guy could wear this. Yeah, in, but uh, not boob armor. Ah, mm. uh, barbarian armor. Barbarian yeah. armor. Armor. I mean, okay. Not too much. Like she's got a gauntlet on her sword hand, and that usually get presented more. This artist really leaned into asymmetry with this one. Yeah, like yeah. horn on one side of the head, skull on the other. Well, one. No, interestingly enough, there might be some method to the man. Is we got a pauldron, a gauntlet and uh, uh, Grieve all on one side, which seems to be the side that would get presented more to the opponent. So this one is super practical because <laughs> we have evidence that it has worked. That is what I am saying. <laughs> he will need a Okay, enough. this is an interesting <laughs> one. Um, I quite like it. I don't like the heels, but I like the rest yeah, of it. Yeah, the heels are, aren't great, but in terms of 
Areas that are chosen to be so the back of the thigh, unarmored. We see that in certain yeah, historical examples. That's do. fine. We see a chainmail kind of, which is usually a little lower. So that's usually a little lower. Yeah, that, they usually that hang lower, but, but you know it's still hanging and those little the V's plate. are quite common. Really so, like the gauntlet, yeah. uh, shoulder piece, and the pauldron. That's a big. Now that's a French design, isn't it? Where it cuts in, where it's really big. I yeah, think it is a, a French. This breastplate. Might not necessarily be specifically made to emphasize a female form, because I'm seeing a, ver a lot of similarity in this shape There's to certain one. ballistic breastplates that were yep. made in firearm period, where you see certain cavaliers yeah. and stuff, where yeah. you see those, because especially by 18, how long the waistline Spanish? goes down, mm -hmm. um, you, that's very reminiscent of later style breastplates that were made yeah, during the firearms period. To and quote you thick. from five minutes ago, it's not boob armor. It's not, uh, yeah, I th uh, that's, I think, okay. yeah, I, I think that's accurate. I think it's not actually boob armor. Oh, it's still a Neither are the ones that you're picking out. Yeah. This, because there's no armor there, there's there. There's no boob armor there. This, there, is, not boob there, armor. this is armored. No, it's not. This, that's, would cloth. You, that's clearly cloth. Would you, would you, call, there. Would you call those little clips armor? Yeah, let, let me. Let would me you call those yeah, little yeah, clips you're, that you're, you're wearing? Show us where the armor is. Tyler. Right there. That is steel. <laughs> that is armored. Let's have a look up here. That is steel. No, that no, is it's not. Armor. Those are clearly just decorations no, and adornments. Not armor. Not, not the boob armor. Next, next yeah. on Shadowversity, Tyrant will be talking about how earrings and necklaces are armor. <laughs> so what do you think of this one, Tyrant? I, see, I, the thing is, if I see skin tones, if any skin tone color, if I see skin tones out of the corner of my eye before I put my glasses on, I already know what team you're going <laughs> yeah, exactly. for. I, I just, I can't believe this. I am doing this completely critically and objectively. <laughs> <laughs> I am not sway. I will join her team. Though. Critically and objectively, the fact that her legs aren't armored. Okay. Yeah, I don't. Well, the fact well, that the very is, kind of the fact that the very center of her frame is the thing that's I don't, unarmored. They're, they're like this is like negative boob armor. They're avoiding armoring the boobs here, and so if I had and then sword, there's an opening that's right where on I the, want to the uh, You know, grab it by those hooky things. That's it. <laughs> Fight over. No. Well, I've got your shoulders. She's got this mat. She got this massive blade on her arm. You know, bracer here. More ninja. Stuff. And so she could. Kind of, <laughs> that is more ninja stuff. You're right. She it could, really is. She could backhand someone also, with. Oh, also, look at how thick huge. that metal is. Like that she is, is way metal. top heavy. No. Yeah. Don't. <laughs> You're not wrong. No, there's like she's medium top heavy. I think. Okay. I'm talking oh. about the armor, gentlemen. Oh right. Yeah. Sure. Okay. So that too. What are you talking about? I don't like it. I'm, and it's not boob armor. I am just sitting here with a bunch of haters. Okay? This is awesome. I'm, no, I'm the connoisseur of boob armor. Then act like I'm it. I'm the patron saint of boob armor, which is why I'm, I can be so critical on this. And there's no boob but armor. I, but I feel like I feel like you are a connoisseur of the non-armor part here. Okay, well let's 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 be objective here. Look, little bits of steel. That's armor. Not armor. That no. is armor. No. This no. is armor. Not this qualified. is armor here. That's all armor down there. Like this is fantastic armor. No, it is not. What am I looking at? This, mm, like leather, lots of leather, yeah, black leather. But it, but actually, it looks like Gambeson down there. So I don't know, it's just the image. That's a Gambeson. You know? That's definitely, like, that's quilted. Not a functional back scabbard, you know. So good luck drawing that. I yeah. like the shoulders, the pointy shoulders. That's, that's what? good. That's you... hovering on the back of the shoulder. You can draw that. The armor, though, looks functional enough. As long as that is yeah, boiled like there's, leather. There's Gambeson By the way, here. this, so, so to give you an idea, guys, boiled leather, like this is kind of... Squishy, mm -hmm. boiled leather just goes it's, it's rock like hard. Yeah, yeah, it's like um, so if that is boiled leather and the rest is kind of like gambit yeah. material, and, and that's enough, armor. You, yeah, it is armor, and it's only like an area that covers the upper chest. And then she's wearing gambit splint, underneath. Splint steel. With splint steel. Oh wow. Okay. I think this it's is armor. a pass. This is boob armor. Yeah. What do you think, Tyrone? Oh, I'm ambivalent. <laughs> <laughs> I like this one. <laughs> He just said so that. Predictable. He yeah. just said that, yeah. didn't he? Well, okay. Tell me why this isn't armored. Okay. I think okay. Isn't armor. So let's say, for example, mm. that she, with her right hand, needs to raise her arm up for an attack. Yeah, that's exactly Congratulations. Right. Look at this spike. Stabbed through the head with your own stuff. Look at that spike. That's just going straight into the head. So no the one. question is, is this boob armor I, I actually think this one does qualify it's, as boot. It qualifies as boot armor because that looks like steel to me. That looks it. like steel. <laughs> and this one actually looks like steel. Is it functional boob armor? Yes. No. I think it's wearable. Like, I sure. Like, the, the, the um, lower part of the breastplate doesn't. It's okay. like resting on the hips. Sure. And she would be able to move side to side. I have a, I have a foil mm -hmm. and maybe a shield or something to help defend against her attacks. And I go for a high attack. 
Nothing she can do about it. Well, well I'm aiming for you know her heart. She can't raise her arms well, to well, defend. She can raise this one. This one actually has a functional pauldron where this one is dog crap. Again, I feel like we're missing the most important She's tactic. Us three walk into a dungeon. We've all got our swords drawn. We're ready to go. We walk in and this is our enemy. All of a sudden, instead of being three on one, yeah. two on two, yeah. Because yeah. you've jumped to her team. Yes. You're just being chivalrous. You always like to protect yes. her. Well, that isn't that, isn't that uh, important part of being a knight? Yeah, like, the, like it's bad. Look, the spikes are bad. And uh, look, there's an opening on the side of the thigh, which is weird. And so it's not not good. I'm just saying what could have redeemed it. Okay, this one's I'm basically yeah. need to hire a mercenary. This one is this, actually pretty good. This one I don't mind that. I don't mind that. Like that is I, functional enough. It, it does expose the heart. I mean, yeah, you're right. They're, they're, it's not great breastplate, but it is a type of breastplate. It looks like armor armor yeah uh, i can see some problems where like if one of the actual cups buckled that's a yeah. lot of pressure yeah. coming into the like, body but the big problem for me when when these that you know spiky pull the, when these female armors kind of have an opening and leave the top part of the chest exposed right it's just like right to the heart you, like one of the main yeah. areas you want to cover is the mm -hmm. heart mm -hmm. um but i mean is it covering as much as what a conventional ballistic um plate would cover not it, they usually cover the upper part a bit more but <laughs> With the exception that it's got a little too much open in the center mm. of the cleavage, it seems functional. Yeah, yeah like, like it, it is. The rest armor. of it, like there like, is no hip she, armor. There's got no... a, a gorget right here. Um, uh, or is it Bever? I get those mixed up. Bever Be covers Bever the chin. Covers the chin yeah, yeah. Um, okay. And a gorget yeah, is yeah, the yeah, shoulders. So, okay. um, gauntlets, they don't seem like, they seem like it covers the main forearm there. And uh, Greaves? Yeah, yeah, with heels, but. We, uh, yeah, it does look like it. That's like. Pre antiquity chest plate. Like, I guess there, there's a bit more similarity to kind of Greek design yeah. stuff here. And that's oh, oh, by, no, the way. The spearhead, by the way, is just stupidly that's yeah, a that's, that's a heavy really spear. Heavy. She is probably um, very strong. Another point of reference very of strong. warriors going in. Very strong with spears. I agree. I agree. Sorry, another point of reference of warriors going in completely stark is yep. Greek. Great, you see, yeah. like oh, you see, painted on vases, yep. and sometimes they just have a breastplate and nothing else. But this does qualify as boob armor. <laughs> it gets yeah. the boob armor pass. She's got a shield, and that shield justifies a lot of you know areas choosing to be unarmored, yep. um, because the shield can cover a lot. So and the battle so, skirt is covering enough here, I from what I can say see. So, except again, see that there's metal on the side, no metal in the middle, and you just have these leather flaps. That's fine. I'm not a fan of that. No, but it, it, it it's historical enough, and it mm. works. Like having just a, for example, in the medieval period, having just a chain groin was perfectly fine, and they would wear other pieces of like jack chains or Is something it, yeah, like that. Yeah, true, true. Um, and look, we see distinct boob armor here, right? Or, you know, and uh, fun more functional pauldrons, and the shield justifies. And so this is actually one of the more it's more leather armor with metal, metal yeah, bits, yeah. And, but that there is a metal and she's wearing helmet. A helmet, like and one she's, of the few people that's actually wearing a helmet. And yeah, and she's also covering like most of the vital parts of the body with the shield. Because yeah. this is the thing, I, I in terms of what parts of your body you choose to armor first, it's the head, head yeah, and I, hands, head and hands, head and hands, uh, head, and then. Hands and then well, you... hands when you can. Mm -hmm. There was periods of history where they didn't like Vikings. No fingies. We always agree. There on was them. periods of history like the Vikings. We have a lot of trouble finding gauntlets. Um, we do eventually find them. We find some amazing ones, but it mm. took a while. Okay, it's very Red she Sonja esque, has... isn't it? It is very much Red Sonja. She has one piece of armor on. Yeah, do the do those scales actually qualify no. as armor? I'm not oh. sure that would stop it. Oh, armor oh, for us. Yes, they are. I hope they wouldn't stop my uh, sword thrust, <laughs> but. You know, I, I'm not. I, I look, think this look, is, look, this look see, see, you is, see how they're hanging. They're loose. They flap around. That is, they, they would easily just move apart. That is, that parts. is a belly dancing costume. Yeah, this would be a fashion style, not. Yeah, armor. I, I would agree. So I think we have covered a very good range of uh, examples. You know, test pieces to study and analyze here on our our cultured episode. A scientific episode on analyzing boob armor. I tried to stay. It's so always good to get good cover. I tried yeah. to stay scientific. <laughs> <laughs> hmm. Yes. Yes. I feel enlightened, uplifted. You know, and and also edified. Like there were important things that we have uh, learned that we can now understand and take with us as we look at how medieval uh, medieval culture and weapons and armor are adapted into fantasy going into the future. I hope you have enjoyed this as much as we have, and thank you for joining, and until next time, farewell. <laughs>